Immunity Infection, beginning of Chapter 13. We'll begin with the chain of infection and go all the way through pathogens and how they affect the body and different types of infections. The links in the chain of infection, the six links that we'll discuss, and on the next slide there's a diagram that will show you the six links and how to break that chain, starting with the pathogen, which is your disease-causing microorganism, the reservoir, which is you, an animal or an environmental component, the portal of exit, which could be a sneeze or an ejaculation, means of transmission, the portals of entry into the skin, through your nose or mouth, into your eye, and then the new host and how to break the chain. If you look at the six areas here of infection, you can clearly see how to break the chain. And medical treatment and testing, uh, quarantining condoms, using a mask, hand washing, avoiding infected individuals, sexual abstinence, being sanitary, uh, immunization. 2.1 million people died last year from diseases that were immunizable health promotion, and seeking treatment when necessary. Your body has a natural defense system of skin, membranes, and resp respiratory tract. And our, essentially, our immunological defenders are neutrophils, macrophages, which are the big eaters of disease, natural killer cells, dendritic cells, don't worry, there's a diagram that will show you these, lymphocytes, which include our T cells, B cells, and memory T and B cells to help fight disease again. Now looking at this slide, this is essentially the exact content I was just discussing. Viruses invade the body through a break in your skin or other portal of entry and they take over in order to replicate themselves. In the second phase, the helper T cells trigger the product production of killer T and B cells. In the third phase of disease, killer T cells and natural killer cells destroy infected body cells. They produce antibodies that bind to the viruses and hopefully mark them for destruction by macrophages, the big ones. Phase 4, when the danger is over, suppressor T cells uh, halt the immune response, and they are reserved to a quick response can be mounted in the future by invasions of a virus if it ever comes back to you. That's why, for example, if you had chickenpox as a child, you will not have it again because your killer or your memory uh, T and B cells will remember it if you do face it. An infected person does not get the same illness again. Symptoms and contagion, multiplying in the body when bacteria are actively multiplying, is the incubation period. You won't feel symptoms until the second or third phase of the immune response cycle, and many times when you're sick, this is why. The process of priming the body to remember an encounter with a specific antigen can be through these four types of vaccinations. Your vaccination, which is introducing a killed or weakened pathogen to stimulate the body to produce those antibodies. Many of you have vaccinations for chicken pox and for uh, measles, mumps, rubella, and so on. Active immunity, you have your own antibodies, either because you've had the disease to the or, or to the microorgan or microorganism. You have passive immunity, which is injection of antibodies produced by other human beings or animals. Acquired immunity, which is the ability of a memory lymphocyte to remember a previous infection. The pathogens and disease, one type is bacteria. Bacterial pathogens and disease are fought by antibiotics. Bacterials are single-celled organisms that multiply. And many of the bacterial infections that you see are on this page as well. Some of the biggest ones that we see that are life takers are pneumonia and meningitis, strep throat as well. Some of these you'll notice you are uh, vaccinated for, tetanus pertut and pertussis being two big ones. The antibiotic treatment, the way actions of antibiotics work, is they essentially stop the disease from replicating itself uh, and from creating more disease. That only works with bacterial infections, and many times you go to the doctor and wonder why you haven't gotten an antibiotic when they tell you you have a virus. If you have a virus, it will not work with a viral infection. And if you have too much of the antibiotic, you can create resistance. So they're looking out in your best interest by not taking antibiotics every time you're sick. Don't take other people's antibiotics as well. Antibiotics can also decrease the, uh, the effectiveness of your birth control, as a side note. Some types of pathogens, also viruses, which are parasites and take what they need. Most common co contagious diseases that we see that are viruses are common colds, also H1N1, uh, which you're familiar with this year, the flus, measles, mumps, rubella, and some of these other ones that we are vaccinated against and have immunization from those vaccinations. Emerging infectious diseases, and you can see many new emerging infectious diseases, as well as H1N1 obviously being a big one this year. These infectious diseases people are concerned with because of many times in being close proximity with people, poverty, uh, unsanitary conditions, and so on. These diseases can spread quickly. What are some of the factors that contribute to these emerging infections? Resistance to drug therapy, poverty, not having access to health care, 
not having access to sanitary conditions, uh, travel and commerce, mass food production and distribution around the world, human behaviors, and so on. Lastly, autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis and systemic lupus are other diseases that are created and from the uh, immunity and breakdown of your immunity. And in another chapter, we will discuss uh, cancer. And many times our immune system breaks down because of age. We start to lose immunity, HIV infection, chemotherapy, or other diseases and illnesses that set us up for autoimmune disorders. Drink plenty of clean water. Avoid contact with uh, mice. Have safe sex. Don't use injectable drugs. Get vaccinated. Control your stress. Have a balanced diet. Get enough sleep. Exercise. Stop smoking. Moderate your alcohol. Wash your hands above all and avoid contact with contagious people. Just a few ways how to support your immune system.